And we're back. Hello. Hey Hi, guys. everybody. Welcome back to Sunday Tea Book, uh, episode, episode nine, nine, chapter five. five. We should we should uh, do that in sync, like practice that okay. beforehand, yeah. and do yeah. like a little song. Yeah. All right. Oof. Uh, hey there, North Country Outdoor Guy. Welcome to the live stream, and everybody else on Instagram and YouTube. Welcome back to Sunday Tea Book. We're back. We're back. We're we had hikes. We had a little and hiatus. Yes, we went. We did all kinds of fun stuff. We had a little, uh, some outing, some camping. You can check our social media for details. I think we posted some details there. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want more, comment and we'll see what we have. But we did a hawk watch. We did some birding. We did some hiking. You know, you got to take advantage of the autumn. It's so fleeting. It's just like that and it's over. So that's what we did. We took advantage of it. And yeah, I hope out there. you guys are enjoying the season as well. Indeed, yes. I hope you're enjoying the season. And we've got a very seasonal tea brewing here today. Actually, by accident, it matches what we're going to talk about. So we Let's are... pretend it's on purpose. We planned oh, it so that we'd be it. doing a tea that perfectly matches today's <laughs> chapter. Uh, Kim and Songzi. So, it's this little dude. I'm going to pick it up. Have a little look. Zongzi uh, is this shape. Usually we have that in the early summer when it's a Duanwu festival. We wrap the... Uh, usually it's a rice with a different stuff in it. Super delicious. A little bit of pork, maybe some nuts, some right. seasoning. They're really good. They're kind yeah. of varied, right? They're not like a special recipe. Everybody... No. Yeah, mm. everybody have their recipe their wrapped spin. in the reed leaves. But this one, instead of a rice and stuff, it's actually tea, black tea from Kimen. Mm. Um, and because it's wrapped, we suggest uh, to boil it rather than brew it with either gaiwa or maybe thermos could be good because it has the it kind of needs to sit. retention. Yep. Yes. Yep. And a while uh, a while ago, I posted how I like to uh, boil this tea. I usually use cold water to start, but today I'm gonna uh, for the speed <laughs> of getting the tea, I'm gonna. Boil that with the hot water and let's see yeah, we want, <laughs> what's we the want, difference. We want you guys to be able to share the action. Mm. Um, check out the the post that Jen's talking about is on Instagram and Facebook stories. So make sure you follow us there to, to check those out. Um, and I want to remind you guys that this tea and five other teas are available in our Classic of Tea Sip Along Six Pack. I just love that name. <laughs> it's a little <laughs> bit cheesy, but I love it. So this is a six pack. The only chance you will have a six pack. <laughs> yeah, it's that's you. <laughs> I shouldn't be so pessimistic. Oh, that's true. That's true. Not you. You guys probably all have a six pack, but it's the, the only, only chance, chance I'm going to get a six pack. So this is a six pack of 25 gram, six 25 gram teas, one from each of the Chinese tea categories, including Zomza Kimen. These are the six teas that we have been brewing and will be brewing for the next few episodes, episodes seven through 12. That's where the six pack comes from, one from each category. Normally, these teas individually would be 76 bucks, but they're on sale in this pack for 58 bucks. So that's a great deal. That's 25% off. So check that out if you want to get yourself a whole hockey sock of great tea. And at 58, throw in a few more. You're that close to free shipping at 75 bucks. So uh, just throw in a few of your own favorites. Boom, you're there. So let me introduce, while well, this boils, let me show you the tea while it boils and while I talk, because tea boiling is probably more interesting than me talking. Here we go. So um, that's just starting to warm up. You can see the zones are floating in there, but let's just warm up for those of you that are new to Sunday Tea Book, um, or those of you that just um, need a refresher. What is Sunday Tea Book? Sunday Tea Book is where Jen and I take a book, paper, or an article that is full of great information about Chinese tea or its culture or something related to Chinese tea. And we either translate it for the first time or if it's translated and the translation has some clunkiness or stuff, we, we go over it. Or maybe it's not clunky, maybe it's just overly technical. We break down the technical aspects. We do it here um, live on Sunday Tea Book. So you might wonder to yourself, well, why don't you just post the translated article on your website? Why don't you just um, you know, make a video, a regular YouTube video? And the reason for that is because we really need you guys. And um, we do post. 
And we do. Yes, you're right. We <laughs> yeah, do. The do. link is down below for uh, that'll take you to this episode and this chapter where you can follow along today with the written translation of this chapter. This particular book, we'll get into the details later. But in terms of Sunday Tea Book, we do post it. But the reason we need you guys here is because uh, this is tricky and it's cultural and sort of this. There's a lot of hidden information that will be lost by just yes. to translate it. Yeah, so if you're here with us and you read the translation, and you've been through this process together, you're going to get more. How do I know? Because this, how it, this came up is, is we've been doing this for a while and I realized, you know, this, is, this dialogue is actually super interesting, not just the finished product. So that is what Sunday Tea Book is and that is why we do it as a live session. And of course, uh, shortly when we get the tea rolling, we are going to have some tea trivia time. So yeah. stay tuned for that. Instagram, you will have to jump to YouTube to enjoy that. We're going to say goodbye to you guys on Instagram. I see Johnny Boy is there on Instagram side. Faisal, Mohammed, hi everybody on Instagram. If you want to enjoy tea trivia, which is a fun, light, fluffy little game we do to kind of warm into Sunday tea book, jump over to our YouTube live stream mm -hmm. to check that out. Uh, you'll be able to find that if on our website as well at gentea.ca slash Sunday Tea Book. You can dig around in there. You will find the link directly to this live stream in YouTube on that webpage for episode for chapter five. Great. Just to quickly mention the book because I use uh, the translation and uh, all, a lot of the content I try to add in when I explain uh, Louis's classic of tea. I rely on this book. Just throw in very valuable uh, information. It's called Cha Jin Shu Ping. Uh, I translated its English name as uh, the classic of tea commentary and uh, narratives and can commentary so yeah uh, I don't know if they have English version but this is such a valuable book same with a lot of there are huge number of great books available in China about tea either studies or cultural or complexity of the whole tea phenomena mm. through and through but but it's not really available in English and uh, I don't know just personally when I read that the more I read the more I realize uh, uh, there's a lot to learn and it's all very fun and uh, I just love <laughs> to be a little bit nerdy when it comes to this. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, and this book is super nerdy, right? By uh, Mr. Wu Jianong, uh, a very prominent figure, the figure of modern Chinese tea. So, yeah. Yeah, wanna... probably the reason we can all enjoy modern Chinese tea to this day. Mm. All right, oh, so I like that you can see the color difference. It changes much faster compared to cold water brew. Yes, yeah. yes. And uh, uh, North Country Outdoor Guys asked, um, what are we boiling water on? So I guess we'll just uh, disclose. It's just an electric hot plate mm -hmm. that boils water. Uh, we don't have it cranked full blast. Mm -hmm. I'm a little bit nervous with the glass teapot on full blast, but we have it high Supposed enough. Supposed to be able to stay yeah, on the I'm, fire. I'm like, going to give you guys a bigger, uh, a bigger zoom in there since she's starting to boil. So you can see that mm -hmm. come into a boil. You can see my hand painted teacups cleverly poised beside it. I, at the same time that I do that, I will say goodbye to Instagram. Head on over to YouTube, please. Join us for Tea Trivia Time coming up shortly. That tea is starting to look pretty ready. So we'll just take a moment and say bye-bye Instagram. Yep. And hello Joseph Burden, I saw you out there. <laughs> yes, we're matching today. <laughs> Slightly shade difference, but it's really blue. Uh, I'm going to turn this off. In the color, I think at least uh, in my screen, it's slightly redder than in real life. It's kind of a beautiful gold color in mm. real life. Uh, it would, I wouldn't say this is my desire to black tea color. If you were using a serving pot, probably uh, pour that out a little bit later when the color is a little bit more uh, ruby toned. But I'm going to stop it because I'm not using a serving pot today. Uh, and the tea liquor color is going to get deeper and deeper as I as it, as it sits because there, it right? also brews in yeah. its temperature and yeah. i don't know when you guys have this tea do you also brew or uh, like a boil like us how do you enjoy this tea yeah or do you have any other yeah. teas in your in your collections that you do boil uh regularly or from time to time let us know if you've ever tried boiled tea if not um you know maybe try it out uh great with obviously zones this of black tea 
great with Zongzi black tea. Uh, many white teas can be boiled. Uh, I like to especially to get them to stretch out. I like to do it after the, I've infused them for a while. Then I hit them with some boil and get that, just get everything. And it's surprisingly, uh, with a good quality white tea like you can get on our website, um, you're gonna enjoy those uh, sort of stretch brews or stretch infusions, if I could call them that. All right, guys, I've made you wait long enough. Let me now. Teacher of time, I love that. Grab the computer and clunkily <laughs> move towards. I'm gonna do it. Tea trivia time. That's right, folks. It is tea trivia time. That time of the day where we have a little fun with some trivia questions uh, to test your knowledge of tea and see if you've been paying attention during the intro. Um, no, just kidding. There's no, <laughs> there's no um, obligation. Take a guess. When the questions come up, you'll see they have uh, numbers. I think it's numbers. Just enter the number and hit enter. That will be the safest. Put commentary in separate entries um, and the computer will hopefully catch it. Enter as quickly as possible to have your um, answer, correct answers tabulated. But again, it's all just for fun. So let's get rolling now. How many boils does Lu Yu does Lu Yu prescribe for preparing Tun Dynasty style tea? Is it two boils? Is it three boils? Is it one boil? Or is it none? He's a cold brew dude. How many <laughs> boils does Lu Yu prescribe for preparing Dun Tung Tung Dynasty? <laughs> Dung Dynasty. No, 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 no. Tung Dynasty style tea. Is it two? Is it one, two, three? Or none? He's a cold brew dude. And you have to enter the number that's beside the written number. So it's a little bit confusing. So don't enter the correct answer, enter the number that has the correct answer written in it. This one's super tricky. Did you do that on purpose? No, no, it, oh, it okay. scrambles all the answers up so they're never consistent. Oh. So I don't really have control over that. All right, guys, you have a few more seconds. I see uh, A2Easy has uh, guessed at number one, which is two. Um, Joseph Burton has guessed number two, which is three. Joseph Burton and Kalu Ver Verite. 33, you got the right answer. It is three boils for tea. Good guess, uh, A2 Easy. North Country Outdoor Guys also, and did it get off? It didn't. Just a little bit too late. You also got the right answer. Try and squeeze it in a little bit quicker. Way to go, guys. Just throw out your guesses. This is all about having fun and goofing around. We're going to be moving on to the next question shortly, and I'm gonna try and use some more sound effects and stuff today, so we'll see if I can pull that off. Tricky stuff. All right, today's tea, Zongzi Kimen, is wrapped in what kind of leaf? I told you I was checking if you were paying attention. We may or may not have said it as we warmed up to the tea trivia time, but is it one, reed leaf? Is it two, pineapple leaf? Three, maple leaf, oh Canada, or four, banana leaf? Watch out, this is really hot. Mm. I often get... I'm gonna mention that. Right. Right, the, one of the things when you're do, doing boiled tea, versus Gaiwan especially. Gaiwan you can often get in there for the sip pretty quickly because you know the boiling water goes into the Gaiwan, it gets cool, da, da, da. this is hot, really hot. Joseph Burton starting the guess off with four, banana leaf. Good guess. Throw them down folks. Mm. What is your guess? You got a few more seconds to squeeze your guesses in. I see them rolling in, probably a little bit of lag, uh, a little bit of lag working its way into the system but hopefully the computer got all of your answers. I you found it. this different than the cold brew? I can't say. I was <laughs> going to mention something about the tea in a minute. Way to go, uh, A2Easy and oh, cool. North Country Outdoor Guys, with the correct answer being reed leaf. And good guess at banana leaf. I purposely chose that one because I think there are certain cuisines wrapped in banana leaf. It is not Zomza and it is not Zomza Kimen. But good guess, everybody. Way to put yourself out there. Um, if you've just joined recently, jump in and start guessing. You, there's no uh, limit. I noticed there's a few other folks out there, so don't hesitate to jump into the game. I was going to say about the tea. Mm -hmm. I always notice the first little bit is a little bit lighter. I can't say that I notice the difference between when you go from cold up, which it should be, right? Because right, it sits longer, but I can't. It's also been a while since we had zone zucchini. I don't know. Okay, I have to say it. For me, the first... Uh, the overwhelming first, not first sip, first a bit was, oh, you go ahead. Oh, right. I forgot we about We got to get back <laughs> to the trivia. The Mandarin Pinyin name slash spelling for Kimen Black Tea is one. I'm going to struggle with pronunciation here, but I will do my best. Is it one, Qimen Hong Cha, two, Huangshan Hong Cha, three, 
Cai men, cai men, cai men hong cha, or four anhui hong cha. Okay, so the the pinyin name slash spelling for kimen is it? Cai men hong cha, huang shang hong cha, cai men hong cha, or anhui hong cha. I guess the pronunciation might give you a large hint. So hopefully you guys will sweep this one, and I'll be able to use one of my cool. Uh, background effects, and everybody got it right with Tim and Hom Cha. Way to go, everybody! Let me find my winner, winner chicken dinner sound. <laughs> oh, hang on. Did it work? There we go. I think it's going. I'm not sure. Oh well, uh, that's the yay sound. So way to go, guys! You guys swept it. Uh, two out of two. Everybody who guessed it got it. Did a few of you? Oh, a bunch of you came in a little bit late. Oh, yeah. Good try. I'm sorry that the computer missed your correct answers. I see four, at least four correct answers. Oh well, we know you got it right. You know in your heart you got it right. You're all winners to me. Let's keep rocking and rolling. All right. According to Liu Yu, the best fuels for boiling tea are these. Is it one, natural gas preferred, followed by electricity? Is it two, hardwood preferred, and then if you can't get hardwood, use softwood? Is it three, charcoal preferred, and if you can't get charcoal, use hardwood? Or is it four, charcoal and then coal? What are the preferred fuels, according to Liu, for boiling tea? You've asked us what we're using. Today we're using electricity. We may not be using Liu's preferred. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guesses are rolling in. I see、uh, Joseph guessed number three. North Country Outdoor Guy guessing number four. A few more seconds to squeeze your guesses in. And remember, the link down below will take you to today's translation, so you can follow along and grab some of these answers right off there. That's totally allowed. That just means you're、uh, following along and reading. Lots of guesses are in, and wow, way to go, everybody! Almost a complete sweep. Good guess, North Country, North Country Outdoor Guys. Way to put yourself out there.、Uh, really close, but the correct answer is charcoal and then hardwood. More about that in this very episode. Hmm. Quicker. I find the、uh, flavor comes out quicker when we start with hot water too. I find. Do you the find the flavor difference though? Difference. I don't know. I'm struggling with the difference. <laughs> don't get nervous. Just I have a very, very, very strong note that I've never tasted before. Hmm. All right. Let's go on with tea trivia. We'll come back to this interesting topic in a moment. <laughs> According to Liu Yu, the best water for boiling tea is from where? Is it from one the mountains, two from large rivers, three from a stagnant pond, or from four a disused well? Where would you get the best water for brewing tea? Throw down your guesses. See what happens. This always reminds me of our tea trips, but I can't talk about those too much because I will certainly give away the answer. So I have、mm-hmm. to I have to bite my tongue. All right. I have a feeling these guys are going to sweep this one. I see the answers pouring、so. in now. A little bit of lag, so I hopefully they're all coming in、uh, on time. Ooh, good ones. Good guesses from everybody. Good, oh, good, good tea morning. Good nice. Tea Welcome, morning. good tea morning.、Yeah. Didn't notice、uh, any guesses before, and nearly a complete sweep. The mountains. That's right. We want to use the springs from the mountain, ideally where the tea grew. Uh, large rivers. It's a great guess, though. Kelu. It is the second、uh, preferred source of tea water. If you cannot get it from the mountains, according to Liu Yu, of course. All right, guys. Let's see what the computer、uh, comes up with for、uh, for our answers. I know that some of your answers got missed, so don't put too much、uh, credence in these results. It's all about having fun. You guys put yourselves out there and took some guesses, so that's great. Joseph Burton with four, A Two Easy with four, North Country Outdoor Guy with at least two, and everybody, you guys are all winners to me. Let's have a little cheer again.、Hmm, weird. You just juggle, and they would know. <laughs> Yay! I'll do it manually. You guys、yeah. did great. That's awesome. That is tea trivia time for this week. We are going to dive into、uh, dive into the classic of tea. Now, after we talk about the flavor note difference, which has been lingering、oh. question over question and making us all wonder, really weird. Okay, just so I.、Uh, um. We're okay. <laughs> Bone soup. 
Oh, you got a bone savory. soup? Savory. Oh, really? It's like uh, when you first hit it in my mouth, so that's what I felt. Then you go back to the normal as I swallow and taste. Mm. But like uh, when I first get just, you know, you uh, inhale when the, when the tea is closed, it's just a habit when I drink tea, right? right I was right. like, bone soup. Right, and that Take first hit? Soup, specific, mm. not beef mm. bone soup. Mm. That first hit. And when, yeah, it's really weird. I never detect that in... Otherwise, that's so interesting. I, didn't I brew in Taiwan that. before too. I do find this tea in terms of um, the savory kind of hits first uh, when you're starting it. Like as for a keeman, which is a pretty right. pretty sweet black tea right. in general and one of my faves. Look at that Ooh. color. Oh, let's it looks go. a little bit uh, darker on my screen. I don't know how you see that. Not as... I found that the color deepens a little bit mm. slower than when I use the cold water. Yeah, you're right. It looks really uh, dark, really dark screen. almost a red on the screen, yeah, but here it's, it's a normal. deep orange, what I would call yeah. like a sort of the, the same color as a... It's funny, I was going to say the same color as Would a be pretty stout rock tea, but um, it does have that red tinge that rock yeah. tea doesn't usually have. Yeah. So that is cool. Oh, well, now it's a... Yeah, and uh, this is my third cup. The first cup gave me the most of that note, that savory note. Then it become more tan, and this one is uh, a little bit, but not as strong at all. Like mm. the first one, when I smell that, I was like, geez, this is really savory. Mm. This one, so the reed does play, the reed leaf plays in here. It changes. And I, I do have a, a tasting note that I'm getting that I did put on the website, which is that s sort of elusive spiciness, like a, it's a clovey cinnamon, that sort of domain. Um, it's not strong, it's not powerful like those are, but it's just teasing in the background there. I really like that. Yeah. Right. Okay, let's uh, dive in the chapter. It's actually a, a very, very interesting chapter. Super intriguing. Yeah, and uh, the more... I think it's uh, overall the book, not just this chapter, but the more I read the book, the more I realize that um, as modern people, so we're pretty far from uh, not just the dynasty, but the outside like uh, nature the outdoors nature. Yeah. right for example the water elements. my experience with water is always tap water if i go to the mm -hmm. outside uh, like in the mountains we have water filters right mm -hmm. so you don't really just drink the straight water and i don't mm -hmm. know how to choose water if i don't have a water filter so those kind mm -hmm. of little things and the uh, or how to treat it he even talks about yes. how to treat the water a little bit if you don't have a filter we'll get there <laughs> it's super interesting this chapter it's really intriguing yeah yeah but i think if somebody like an old style farmer or old style like you're more uh uh connected with uh, the old style raw lifestyle mm -hmm. i think it would be making more sense as a sometimes when i read them i said what what are you talking about anyway so just to quickly summarize this uh, uh, chapter, it talks about boil, but it goes a little bit beyond, right? Uh, start by doing the cake, several steps to really uh, prepare the tea. You gotta roast the cake, then you cut the cake, then you boil the tea. And he actually spent a pretty good time explaining uh, what kind of fuel is good mm -hmm. for roasting and boil the water, mm -hmm. and uh, what kind of water is good. And uh, he quickly touches on the uh, kind of how to drink the tea, how to enjoy the tea, which will be the next episode is about drinking. And uh, we're going to do a little anime about if you read the translation, which the link is down below in the description area, uh, you can read a little bit more in detail. But this is the fast play. OK, I'm going to. You ready? You we're going to cruise through it. So I'm going to do we're the We're going to act it out. Yeah. So basically, you turn... I don't want to turn. <laughs> Forget about it. So you turn the tea cake, roast, and rest it for a bit. Then roast it again. Okay? That's done. Put that in the container and cut it. Remember the shape of the container, basically like a, a rolling pin-ish thing, but cut the leaves, so, 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 cut it. Right. And put it aside in the container, ready for use. That's how you roast and cut the tea. And then, then 
you got to boil the water before uh, you brew, right? But so you put your pot on your carefully prepared fire and you go for, remember how many? There was three, right? So the first boil is when you get the little fish eyes starting to come up and then you grab a little bit of the water out and you put it in a bowl off to the side. You're gonna use that. Don't lose it, don't spill it, don't drop it. Then you let the water finish coming off the boil number two, which is when the edge starts to bubble and you get your spoon of tea, throw it into the pot, stir it with the tongs and that's gonna calm things down and the water is eventually gonna come up to boil number three, which is raging like the ocean, is the way it's described on the, uh, in the translation on the website. Raging like the ocean, what was that water for, you're wondering? Psh, throw that back into the boiling pot, calm the boil down, promote the foam. Isn't that sound magical? I really wanna go back in time and see somebody do this with the real tea. And that's possibly similar to you put salt to like I don't know, but water. the foam yeah. stays, right? Because mm -hmm. the next step is to, is that, so that's the preparation. Then you start the serving, which is also sort of, uh, he starts to get into in this one where the uh, first bowl is sort of a special bowl, the best one. And then second, third, fourth, fifth, uh, they go down in that order and you're trying to make them all equal and all this stuff, but uh, super cool. I really want to see that preparation in real life. <laughs> great job, great job. 1200 years ago. It's 1200 years ago. Anybody right? got a time machine? <laughs> so uh, a few interesting things here, talking about roast. I ran through that very quick, but the key thing is about making things uh, even, right? So in terms of a roast, uh, just like you're cooking any dishes, you talk about length, uh, the duration, duration mm -hmm. as well as the temperature. Mm -hmm. So in terms of temperature, he wants that uh, high and uh, even, make sure it's even. High temp? High temp, mm. oh, that's actually good to say. Uh, in uh, all the book, uh, in this book, uh, we will talk about a high temperature a lot. So what is high temperature? We put that uh, in the time frame of 1200 years ago, high temperature is, you know, charcoal ish. It's not jet boil. You don't <laughs> roast with right, the jet boil. Right, for people boil. who know. Right, the same uh -huh. with later on when we talk about boiling water. Yeah, good High point. temperature is as high as that's a natural possibility. Right, right, right. yeah. Yeah, and uh, then he also talked about uh, time. Uh, how long? How long do you roast Duration. it? Mm. Usually, you do twice. First is to give it a rose till you see a little bit curl up on the surface. Uh, mm -hmm. So is that five minutes? Is that three minutes? Depends. It's observation. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a very um, uh, somehow uh, terrifying for a beginner kind of thing, but uh, very much more accurate than number in my right, opinion. Right. Because every TKK is different. Where you are is different. Like if you make a dough, you know. Right? You cannot just right. knead for 10 minutes, yeah. despite you were in, say, Ottawa or in Florida. It's different. Yeah. Your, your yeah. room or temperature. Especially the, the fermentation, right? It really depends on your details. Yeah. So in terms of this cooking kind of a, a tea and cooking is really related. So it's always the same recipe mm -hmm. calling for mm -hmm. this time. It's always like, it's better to observe the thing itself than link it to absolute yeah. uh, number of... Yeah temperature or time. And he's shooting for evenness, which is interesting to see many times in the book, we'll see things that they're shooting for in Tang Dynasty tea that are still true today. Mm -hmm. We still want, in general, whatever process you're doing, it's really important to apply that process evenly. That's yeah. the beauty trick, right? Yeah. Oh, that looks really good now, nice and red. Right, and um, there's a two time, uh, two kind of a roasting, and there's a cooling time. Uh, how long do you cool it? Mm. Also, not by a minute. It's cool till those are curled, I believe, will become soft. And uh, then we roast it again. So this is actually very important because what does uh, the curled leaf soft mean? It means the mm. water has, again, distributed from where high moisture to low moisture. The curled one means it's low moisture, mm. right? the hive moisture is usually inside. This cooling time, give it some time for the water to relocate, distribute in the tea cake itself, mm. uh, which we will still see nowadays in making oolong tea. You know how people do shakes and stuff, and shake, rest, shake, rest several times. Mm. What's the purpose of the rest? It's still the same, right? Let the water be evenly distributed for mm -hmm. the next uh, 
shaking. Yeah. It cannot move instantly, right? It has yeah, to move. otherwise you will have parts that is dried and parts that are still highly water concentrated. Mm. So that is actually a very key step in tea making and in his process of tea uh, preparing. And when you have to re-roast the tea cake again, there are two ways to do it. If the tea cake was sun-dried, you want to roast it till the cake is uh, more soft. But if the tea cake was roast dry, you just wait till the steam is gone. Like right. the steam. So it'll give off a little steam. I just want to emphasize for those of you who have been with us for a while, we did talk about tea processing a couple of chapters ago, and there is a roasting phase at the end of that on the skewers. And you'll correct me if I'm wrong, but this is not, this is the, you're preparing the tea now. You know, you've had it in your little urn for a while. That's everything. You're, it's Very actually, and it's a bit confusing because we don't imagine, we don't have that kind of a step now with our tea. Aren't we lucky we have everything so dry and so ready to go, well preserved typically? Yes. It's a, first is our process is very different from his mm. time. Uh, second is our storage uh, uh, conditions. Climate control, etc. Everything, yeah, yeah. and uh, transportation. Everything has mm -hmm. improved drastically, mm -hmm. and uh, in and uh, the climate where you live, right? If you really live in a really really humid area, you can still roast tea before you drink it. Just mm -hmm. gentle, give it a little dry. It helps with the aroma, and that's why he's doing that here too. Mm -hmm. And the second thing is, if you look at a lot of uh, um, like. Uh, uh, minority groups in China, minority races, how do you call that? I don't know. But those That's are, perfect. Uh, cultures. I think people understand. Like okay. there's a... Uh, I have a video when we were in Dali and there have a, mm. uh, the Bai, bai Zhu, uh, Bai oh. people. So uh, their custom start still with roasting. Uh, it's a very, it's the kind of habit that developed uh, due to the, you know, historic, the climate, right? The climate, mm. the at that time, that's the condition. So how do we make things taste better? Oh, we know this is pre roast to make that better. So that's a great point to differentiate yep. this vis-a-vis -vis the, the ending of making tea. Mm. Oh, I'll put the link to that video down mm. below. Uh, give me a while. Mm. After. Actually, they are, they are, their custom, their, their way of drinking tea is very similar to uh, how Tang Dynasty people drink tea. They put a bunch of spices and stuff. <laughs> I, it's not my thing, but it's Interesting very cool. Though, right? It's very cool. Mm. I really enjoy watching them do that. Uh, anyway, the whole roasting, you have to avoid uh, burn outside mm -hmm. while the inside is still pretty raw or humid. Um, that's about roast. And um, uh, I think a lot of times when we talk about Tang Dynasty, we often think, you know, link with uh, Japanese tea, the mm. whole tea ceremony, Cha Dao, even uh, because uh, it's originated from uh, Tang Dynasty, there are uh, tons of similarities. Uh, but actually, the majority of the Japanese uh, tea ceremonies are uh, more heavily mm. affected uh, in the Song Dynasty. So. I've heard people talking about tea powders and stuff uh, about the Tang Dynasty tea. People boiled tea powders at that time, and uh, probably even myself because sometimes I don't mm -hmm. talk very uh, precisely. I would also call that tea powder. Mm. But uh, just to be clear, uh, it's not tea powder. I I might even call that the first CTC because right. <laughs> for people cut. who don't know, that's the uh, sort of the modern oh. tea bag tea. Right. It's a cut tear curl or cut tear crush. Right. I think those are used interchangeably, but it's not powder. I think is your point. It's yes. not like matcha. So and I also a, thought it, it was right. like matcha, but it's no, not. No, it's not matcha. And uh, of course, the CTC is a cut uh, during the process, and this is not. But uh, just mean the end result looks a little bit similar, mm -hmm. like a, like a tea particle. Mm. Uh, you know, little like crush pieces. or. Yeah. You know, not quite a powder. Mm -hmm. First, when we look at the tools that he described, when before we uh, boil the tea, we have to, you know, cut it in the little uh, container. So that thing. I was looking for a picture earlier. That's what I was doing. Oh, I couldn't okay. find one of it. Darn. 
It was just the mortar and pestle, which is in the yeah, processing probably phase. Probably like two two chapters ago mm. when we talked about it. So just with that, that's a really thin blade that cuts. If you go to Chinese uh, traditional medicine store, some when they prepare uh, medi uh, like uh, herbs, they still use that nowadays for small amount. So that can cut, then can cut really fine. Mm. Uh, imagine the rolling motion when we do fine dyes. But using that motion to make powder, you, you're gonna have tea like midnight if you start in the afternoon. Right, you know? right. So it's not a powder. And also in his book, he very clearly say, uh, powder is not desired. Mm -hmm. The good fine particle is looking like a fine rice. So that yeah. also make that very clear that um, uh, we're not shooting not for a powder. powder. We're shooting for fine particles mm, mm. Mm -hmm. just uh, read uh, a little bit of uh, ah uh, 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 a two e z said it looked like a oh a while ago yeah oh, the uh oh, the right. color we were at when we were in that deep orange face i feel like it's deep in yeah. another shade now and um oh, yeah. i feel like it's slightly more red did i say it. red Gonna put in another you can one. do another batch, yeah. Yeah. And, and Boudique joined us, who's having uh, some tea in their new Shui Ping, which must be super fun to uh, to enjoy. Uh, a Gaba Oolong from Taiwan, turquoise Gaba. Sounds so fancy. Nice. Um, turquoise. In, in a new Shui Ping. So hey, I'm on the I'm on the uh, the Discord page. So I'm gonna encourage Bodique, who I think I've seen there already. To shoot us some pictures of that uh, of that cute little teapot, I'd love to see it. And uh, anybody who's not on the Discord, the link is down in the description below, which may, will mean you don't have to use that complicated looking invite code that's shown on the screen right now. You can just click on that and dive on into our Discord where we share tea pictures, tea knowledge, travel. When we're traveling, we sometimes and shoot pictures. And I have pictures. to say, you guys are the inspiration of me making little videos. Lots of questions. Anyway, it's coming up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know. yeah. Sometimes from the, you know discussions that I have, I found a really good materials and inspirations for my future uh, video. I just wanted to show that when we reset the water, we're back to that really the light gold is a now. Bit deep. Yeah, and because we've got liquor in the um, in the zones of it, kind of has infused out, and we've got a little string of red on the bottom. So it's pretty cool. Right. And Good Tea Morning says, I'm now noticing how they prepare tea in ancient Chinese dramas. <laughs> I also love watching those. Yeah. They do have that immortal and pesto setup. Mm, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a very uh, classic kind of uh, making tea process. I wonder if they watch dr dr the dramas or the gong fu ones. I'm I'm a junkie for the gong fu one, but that you can almost always see tea preparation in any of always, the uh, yeah. of the old Chinese um, historical kind yeah. of shows. And I'm those uh, uh, you know annoying jerks who point out ah oh, that's wrong ah <laughs> oh, this is wrong. They don't use that kind of teacup. I also enjoy that, you know, like right, right, little things up, uh, yeah. technical critique. Our <laughs> our secret dream is to someday be hired on the set as the uh, historical tea consultant. <laughs> uh, and welcome, Jubati. Hello, finally, yeah. good to see you here. Yeah. Let's what? Yeah. Oh, I thought you want to say something. <laughs> I was gonna say let's continue because let's we're talking it. about the fuel, the fire. Mm -hmm. So according to Lu Yu, he thinks that the clean charcoal is the best and then the hardwood and don't use softwood because I think you can call that softwood, right? You know, yes. pine and those always have the oil, those with the smells and stuff, yep. uh, not desired. Yep. And also Smoky the temperature and stinky, is not. Like a stinky, mm. they're not stinky, they're very aromatic, actually yeah. quite pleasant if you like the smell of burning yes. softwood. Yes. But not what we want infused into our tea. Mm. I emphasize on clean charcoal is because uh, uh, living now here, you know, like uh, when we buy charcoal, it's from the store, it's well prepared, you line up, they don't have any smell, they're clean, they're not greasy or stuff, but... I wanted to point out when we first started, uh, we got a little clay, like a little clay boiler. Mm. And when we first oh, started actually, using it, we right. did have stinky charcoal. I actually took it back to Home Depot after oh, a couple right. uses. And yes. uh, it did, you would think that the water you is in a clay pot, 
Um, it shouldn't be a big deal as hot as hot, right? Eh, not right. Hey, yo, oh, I didn't. <laughs> Thank you, Bodique. I got the notification of you posting the teapot. That is awesome. But I will now go and do not disturb. Yes, the smell of the charcoal it, it goes significantly the affected the, the aroma, like the flavor of the NT because the water was, we even tried the water. We took yeah. that charcoal back. It's pretty yeah. incredible though. I forgot about that. That's actually very right? good. So, well, I guess if it's a store one, there's still different ones. But, uh, but if we just put our mind a little bit back in the time where there's no industrial stuff, mm -hmm, uh, industrial mm -hmm. stuff, and uh, you know, making charcoal could be pretty local, maybe a whole village, everybody yeah. makes a, make that at home style, store that. Like, you know, there's a chance that they get contaminated with a different kind of uh, oils or stuff, get sure. the uh, smell. And uh, you know, when we're in tea region, when we use uh, charcoal to finish tea with roasting, uh, we always use the previous year's charcoal first, mm. to let it fully like uh, dried and uh, some smell dissipate. And even a few days before we're gonna, a few days or weeks before we're gonna uh, roast the tea, we took those charcoals out for sun baths, get rid of humidities. Again, the tea region is always very humid. So, you know, get rid of the humidities, get rid of this, uh, the smells and everything. Because when they're wet, you know, when we light it, there's little sparkles and those could possibly burn the leaves. Sparks. Or sparks, yes. Right, because if you're, yeah, your charcoal has those little orange embers popping up. Mm. You don't want that. So right. there's a little uh, process of that. If I wasn't there in uh, participating in the tea production, I wouldn't even think about that. Mm -hmm. So that's why I still emphasize on cleaning charcoal, even though for most of us uh, who live in the city, a charcoal is a charcoal. So this is the third boil you're witnessing there. Yeah. You could kind of <laughs> see it go through the phases, uh, maybe not so much with the glass, but you could mm. see when it started, it had the little fish eyes and then the edge start to boil and now it's pretty much like the ocean and this is the one we don't want to leave on too long but yeah and it, so to summarize why he talks about uh, the fuel no flavor not contaminating any like campfire not cool because you can smell that mm -hmm. and high temperature again not high temperature in today's uh, kind of um, um, uh, situation, right? I use jet boil as the today's extreme high temperature, which right. they don't have. And in many <laughs> books uh, and uh, different uh, references, everybody wants boil water the fast as possible. That's in ancient times, not right. today. There right. is a difference of how fast they could right. be. Right, right. So, I just want to explain to people right. who may not know, like jet boil is like a little, oh, oh, it's right. like a little jet engine that boil that's used for camping that boils water in literally under a minute. It'll boil a liter of water like that. And if you leave your pot without anything, the metal will melt. So th we're not talking about those temperatures. Yeah, there's in not Tang that Dynasty techni times, right? uh, yeah. technology yet. Yeah. So that, and that's why they want a charcoal, even charcoal with the flames on it. That's almost the highest temperature you could get. Or hardwood, that's also high temperature. So all the stuff they're selecting is for high temperature mm -hmm. at that time. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's the feel. Uh, <laughs> next is about the water. This if just because because uh, just because Joseph had a, oh, co a comment sorry, about charcoal, I want to just address it so we mm. can then move on to water. Right. He's talking about the olive pit charcoal he's seen people use for tea, which is the desired one for that that little stove we have. And and uh, like yeah. he says, it is kind of expensive and hard to get. Yeah. So what we found is the cheater tip is you could just use briquette, like a good quality briquette is gonna not, you know, if it's stinky like the ones we talked about before, yeah. you know, not good. But if you can get a decent briquette that's smokeless and odorless, it works yeah. too if you can't get those olive pit ones. Yeah, that's a very good point mm -hmm. about olive pit charcoal. For those of you who never heard of that, those are uh, charcoal that made of a is it really olive? I feel like it was just a kind of a fruit or Stone something. fruit center? Yeah, something like mm. that. It's, uh, what it does is first the shape is very pretty <laughs> and it's very manageable for tabletop burning. Like yes, the, and uh, for the scent. little 
Yeah, the it's little... a, a more Chaoshan area thing. The good thing about that charcoal is a super high temp, one of the highest uh, mm. temperature uh, charcoal possible. Right, just like what we're talking about. We Lu Yu high temp, yes. right? Yes, yes. Yeah. And uh, no order. It's really order free. Mm. So, what I noticed with uh, at least what we bought here, like uh, what's the brand we use? I forgot. I think we went with Weber, was Weber, pretty good. Yeah, which uh, I like. I so far feel like they are the least mm. smelly. But they always have the first little bit of one smoke. minute of that uh, you know chemical ish smell, yes. which I yeah. always let it, the fuse go away, then put the water on. Yeah. But yeah. that uh, uh, that olive one doesn't have that process, so mm -hmm. it's very and it's for <laughs> for indoor use. But you know, if you are concerned and everything, don't use that indoor. But uh, yeah. in general, it's considered very indoor. Again, in ancient time, you know, the right. Chinese cells, our houses are not sealed. It's very open. To this day, right? In the yes. in some of the regions. It's I really always beautiful. say, we, which I always forget, we have farmer who uh, built a house and didn't have time to finish the second or the third floor. So basically all they have is the roof, the windows, everything is open with just, but you know, <laughs> that kind of open for us was really normal. So yeah. for our indoor use was uh, relatively semi-outdoor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I'm pretty excited about the water section too because I've noticed reading over this, you know, we do a lot of hiking and we even share a lot of our outdoor experience with you folks at Gen T and uh, I didn't realize, but it is actually super related and we're gonna see more. We've talked about how it's related in terms of, uh, you know, charcoal and fires and these things. And uh, with water, there's another experience we had that I want to share at the right moment. Stay tuned. <laughs> Stay tuned. I don't know. Water. Super hot. Super hot. Good. Okay, yeah. I want to talk about insulated cups and mugs, right? Why Chinese teacup is brilliant is exactly this. I can pick this up and I know right away, uh, uh, do not drink. Um, and you know, I'm, I have the habit of picking up by the rim. So I didn't grab it where my, my fingers would be burned if I grabbed this section right here. Right. Now. This is actually a super great feature that we shouldn't, you know, I don't want an insulated cup or I'm not going to find out till I'm maybe here. And if I'm really unlucky there, I, oh, that would have been too hot. You grab the cup, you know, yeah. wait. Yeah. Huh. Water. Water. Sorry. Keep it real. <laughs> Third try. Okay, we'll see if we can get to this part. It's a big session. It's a big session in this book and it's a good section to really dive in a little mm. bit more. Mm. Uh, just want to mention that first, I think we had one episode of a Sunday tea book talking about water because it's also a chapter in my mom's book. For sure. Right? Mm -hmm. China tea, we talk about water. Mm -hmm. Then uh, I also did another video on water. Uh, a more introduction a little bit even i think we went to grocery store and pick up a different uh, uh waters and compare the uh, the contents and stuff so um you know in china we have saying water is the mother of tea i'll link those videos below keep going <laughs> this suddenly i feel like a saturday night what is that show called Live? Yeah, was that the one they have two anchor sits there and that was really fun. Anyway. Yeah, probably. Uh, they do the news on that show. Yeah, 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 yeah that, that's my favorite part. Uh, anyway, and we talk about, you know, if you have an A grade tea with a B grade water, the, the final tea would just taste like a you know, B, B, B grade. B plus. <laughs> or if you have a B grade tea with an A grade water, the tea will actually taste like A grade. So those all just emphasize on the importance of tea. And Lu Yu... I would have gave it A minus. <laughs> and Lu Yu, in this book, he very clearly laid out what's important, uh, what's the ranking in his heart, which is the mountain water is the top. Then the big river water is the second and uh, well water is the third. Well, actually, he skips a bunch of the middle ones, and well water is the worst. The worst, yes, yes, Bottom. the worst. And pretty much, a, pretty much where you get the waters, right? Yeah. At that time, okay. 
I got and I would at that time. Right. Because now we have so much.、Uh, so many sources of water. Yeah, and、uh, he's the inspiration for a lot of a lot lot more、uh, books on water.、Mm-hmm. You know, many books dedicated just on water throughout the dynasty, Tang Dynasty, Song, Ming, Qing, all the dynasties. People write books only on water. And、uh, those books in general tells you、uh, their criteria, what they think is a good water or bad water,、mm-hmm. and they also do ratings of different famous、uh, rivers and、uh, springs and stuff. It's like、uh, use North American as an example. It's almost like they rate okay, St. Lawrence River five star,、uh, Mississippi River、uh, five star,、uh, Ottawa River three star. A random star, okay. But just cool, what cool. I mean is, they go to famous. Yes, these are、places. not the Gen T ratings for the North American <laughs> rivers. These are just an example. Yeah, just if we can to get to it, we will provide at a later time ratings for all the major North American rivers. We will. <laughs> But that's what they did. So you can actually have a list of,、uh, you know, what who thinks what is a better mm-hmm.、Uh, mm-hmm. water. So it was pretty fun. I can picture the debate around the mahjong table. You know, where one person, no, this author was right. He, this river's the best. The other person, no way. This river's way better. Five stars. Your river sucks. Right.、Um, and in throughout the history, all those thousands of years, there are in general three schools of thought.、Uh, thought. Yeah. First、uh, is by Lu Yu, and、uh, he's believer that it was a focus on origin based. So I mean, mountain, river, well, or some other like an origin base. What kind of water is better?、Right. What kind of is、right. a, you know a little bit imperial? Then the second style, second school is、uh, taste and、uh, visual based. They、mm. want the water, the sweet water is better, the clear water is better. You know, muddier or、uh, you know a little bit bitter or plain water not as good. Like that's、right. more use our sense. Sensory to yeah, sensory perception. We are deciding not、right. based on where it came from, but what is the result in the mouth. Yeah, and then、notice. the third school of、uh, evaluating water is use weight,、uh, leading by weight. Yeah, the weight,、uh, leading by the famous Emperor Qianlong,、uh, which if you love like Longjin, you will know he's the guy who made Longjin really famous because he loves it.、Uh, He actually even、uh, like、uh, created a little tool just to measure water, to weigh it by measure. Wow!、Uh, basically, just you set the volume, right? Then you weigh everything. And he actually not maybe not him himself, maybe his officers. Anyway, they weighed a bunch of famous、uh, water around the country. This is hardcore. You know, okay.、Yes. Just to say,、uh, for again, Saint Lawrence, Mississippi, Ottawa River, for example. So basically, say five, density. Exactly, five、uh, hundred、uh, milliliter, and uh, uh, Mississippi is five hundred point one gram.、Uh, Mississippi River,、uh, Saint Lawrence is five hundred gram. Okay.、Uh, Ottawa River, five hundred point three three grams. Okay, so which one is better? What did I say? I forgot. But the lightest one wasn't better. I think it was the Saint Lawrence. I gave that five hundred. But anyway, that's so, how they measure. Okay. Okay, the lightest is the best, and、uh, the one that he said the best was、uh, Beijing Yuquan, Yuquan, a very famous water in Beijing. Anyway, was、uh, rated the number one for him. Interesting. So all these ways all have its、um, pros and cons. Pros、right? and cons, and they are right. Partially. Right. I, I was going to say this weight one intrigued me because basically it's talking about purity. Yeah, yeah. It is a、uh, you know before we have all those uh, uh, fancy complicated uh, uh, tool those、uh, you know machines to、uh, really really take everything apart to, to look at the water. This is this、uh, old style of、yeah. uh, telling quality. Getting pretty darn close. You know really I mean? interesting. So、uh, this is not all. The, but this will be it for today's、uh, Sunday tea book review. Okay. In next episode,、okay. we'll continue on water, touch a little bit on chemistry, because、mm. what does、uh, what's the difference between mountain water and、uh, 
you know, big river water. Let's break it down to nice. not just okay the location. Like what does that really implies? What's the chemical in it that affects that? Right on. And a little bit more. Yeah. So I'm going to save my story for next week too, because ah. it's related to water as well. But I will put some videos of our time in the Rockies to Ooh. give you a hint about what I'm going to talk about. Okay, so you're going to have to do some homework <laughs> and there's going to be... He is saying that for you. He says that for himself because he will be like, what did I say? No, no. And there's going to be some tea trivia <laughs> questions on this too. So you better do your homework. I'm serious. And yeah, so this is super, you can see why we love this chat. Well, all the chapters have been really interesting, but this one was really cool. We have a preparation instruction. I don't know, for me, melting my heart. Are you going to try that. it at home? I know we have different teas and different yeah. processes, but it might be fun. Yeah, just go for it. Try it out. Uh, mm -hmm. it, uh, read, read it down below. See if you can do your own rendition. I was thinking of trying it with a jumping shui xian just because it's a little brick that I could roast. It's kind of goofy, but you know, I might throw it, throw a tea down, see if I could do it, crush it up, boil it, see how it comes out. I don't know why not. All right, let me uh, let me get back on track here. Let me have a little read here. All right, guys. So uh, yeah, you read the comments. I'm going to okay. give the little outro spiel. So important links are going to go down below. I've got a bunch of new ones. I'm going to add. We have a bunch of intro videos to help you warm into. Uh, Sunday tea book for next week or if you're watching this after the fact after it's posted by the way you're going to notice the link will not work for the next day or two give us a minute this episode will appear on the page that you're probably looking at right now link is down below where the translation is the video is also there um, yeah um, guys, if you like this content, please give us a thumbs up. We absolutely love sharing this time with you. I kind of miss this. So I haven't done Me this too. It's been a quite a while. We had a little hiatus. We were taking advantage of the great weather, but it turns mm -hmm. out it was a great idea because we're learning a lot of this stuff that Lou is talking about. I wouldn't know this all the time. Only because my own agree. outdoor times. Yeah, yeah, if you're an outdoorsy person, you'll be able to relate to a lot of this, especially if you're trying to brew tea in the outdoors. We've mm. encountered a lot of these issues he's kind of addressing. Um, more on that next week. Mm. Um, so oh, yeah, so and if you're an outdoor person and know some good water filter for taste, not just safety for drink, let us know because yeah, we're looking us, for some filters. Leave us a comment down below for that. We've been looking for one. We have one that works fine for not dying, which is great. I like not dying. We added charcoal. Didn't work so it well for the taste. It still has some uh, flavor issues, so we're not sure. Maybe Lu Yu will give us some tips. We'll see. <laughs> um, also, Cha Ren magazine available on our website. Check that out. It's full of great information. Most of all, I want to thank you guys for joining us uh, for first for being patient and coming back after our big break of touring the outdoors, going all over, bird watching, looking at the leaves, enjoying the outdoors, enjoying the tea outdoors. We'll see you guys on Discord. Uh, uh, see us there at the link down below. And um, next week's tea will be Show Me White Tea, <laughs> also available in the Sunday Tea Book six pack. So you can um, you can get that. There's also a link to that down below if you want to grab get all the Get your six pack today. Yeah, yeah. You could get a six pack and one single order at Gen Tea. That's 25% off compared to ordering like those teas. Room. It's yeah. really good. It's really good. Anyway, guys, it's all about you guys and hanging out with you guys, sipping tea with you guys. Any comments we want to address before we punch out? Tian Long had yeah. good taste in tea. Oh, yes, he yes. did. Yes, he and did. Joseph, it is so he good did. to see you in the crowd again. It, uh, we feel the same way that you feel. Mm. Um, really nice to see your name pop in with your smiley face uh, yes. icon. Um, you're not too you far from us, I believe. We were driving right by your place the other day when we were touring around Peterborough, if I believe. Correct me okay. if I'm wrong or if you don't want people to know where you're from. Sorry about that. I won't say it again. Um, <laughs> but everybody, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, uh, Good tea morning. I'm glad you learned a lot. That's yeah. what it's all about. Uh, throw down your questions. If something pops up later, leave us a comment back on the video, on the, on the webpage, wherever you want. We'll find it. Um, and until next time. Keep steeping. Keep steeping. Bye-bye.